when should exogenous ketones be used? Well, it really would be anytime you want high ketones or anytime you want some of the benefits I've mentioned earlier, like you want a higher metabolic rate to facilitate weight loss. Ketones have been shown to help with satiety and appetite control. So you're trying to control your cravings. So you're sipping on the ketones in the evening. If you're anything like me, that's when I have my most cravings. Uh, you want to control inflammation or you are an, you're exercising and you want an extra fuel source beyond just the glucose and the fats. You want that extra macronutrient to fuel your exercise. Those are all reasons why you would be interested in exogenous ketones. Now, I have had a bit of an evolution um, getting more familiar with ketone biochemistry. Early on, I was a little wary of exogenous ketones because I worried about someone drinking ketones while they're eating a cinnamon roll or something um, where you have high insulin and high ketones. That would be an unnatural state. You don't normally have that because typically if you have high insulin, you're inhibiting ketone production. You inhibit ketogenesis. But with the rise of exogenous ketones, particularly the bioidentical BHB, you can get a substantial increase in ketones very quickly. Could those ketones be reversed in their ketogenic pathway? What was once an acetyl-CoA molecule that was diverted to ketone, can it go back and turn into acetyl-CoA and now take that other path, namely going down the path of lipogenesis? So is it possible for the ketone to be metabolized into fat? No, um, it is not because this is a process that's happening in the liver. The liver is the cell that is making ketones that is then spilling into the blood. Now, other cells can make ketones, but they typically keep them. The liver is an exception because it is not able to overcome or to reverse one of those steps. When you take the acetyl-CoA and you're converting it over a few steps to the ketone, some cells can go from ketone back up to acetyl-CoA and then burn it. Um, but the liver is not one. So the liver is a cell that it, or its cells are capable of making the ketones, but they're not capable of burning them. It just does not have the enzymatic pathways to do so. So that is not a well-placed fear. And despite my speculation early on, um, that appears to not be justified. I know of no evidence that shows that the liver can take the ketone and turn it back into fat or that any cell can do that. So you can use the ketones uh, without that fear, at least. Now, I don't mean to sound like I am just a uniform advocate of them. I use exogenous ketones particularly for exercise and particularly in the evening, just my personal use to to help me that the tartness, especially of the my my favorite one, the American Ketone Company one, um, has a, a tart fruity flavor with ice and, and it's mixed with water, and it really just helps me personally with cravings. I would be very curious to hear how you have used exogenous ketones. In fact, however you're watching this, and if you're on the YouTube Insulin IQ channel, please share in the comments. I'll be curious to scroll through and see how you guys have been using them. But there are myriad benefits to ketones having been proven valuable for decades, having been once viewed as metabolic garbage, literally quoted metabolic garbage. Um, really, Dr. Cahill, that I, who I cited earlier, was the one to help establish the fact that ketones are a viable and beneficial nutrient or energy source in their own right. And even beyond energy, signaling to the cell to do all kinds of things, and some of which I've mentioned, like controlling inflammation, increasing metabolic rate in fat cells, et cetera.